Okay, so we're going to try. I've, I've started this a little bit, but we're going to try. I'm peeking a little bit. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me put the, the gain on my mic down. Here we go. Okay. Okay. I think that's better. Uh, we're going to try to uh, move my Emacs config into Nix. So far, all I've done is literally say, yes, I want Emacs in Nix. And I've tried, I've tried putting in some packages, but I, I think this is not the actual way that I should be doing this. Uh, I should actually be using this overlay, which uh, Nixflix in chat has been kind enough to mention to me before. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair of me. Um, so this is what we have so far. Um, we, we literally have Emacs enabled, okay, and extra packages, closure mode, CIDR. Now, if I keep going down this path, what I would actually, um, actually add Nix mode to your use package. <laughs> That's fair. I don't even have Nix mode installed. Oh man, that is that is pretty lame. Um, that's really funny. Okay, I need to do that. We'll do that too. Okay, so far I have this. Now, as I understand it, if I was to continue the normal Nix way, I would then have to define every single effing package in my config right here. And I feel like there's got to be a better way to do it. And if I understand the Emacs overlay correctly. <laughs> yeah, many month long quest is beginning. It very well might be, in which case I, I would will probably give up because I only have so much patience and time. Um, okay, so here's the Emacs overlay from the Nix community. And they have this little thing. I was just reading about it, mostly because of Nix Flakes telling me about it. That's going to be really confusing right now because we we have you know that's somebody's username in, in chat. It's very 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 uh, clever. Okay, there's Emacs with packages from use package. So yeah, patient like that's what's confusing, right? To me, it's like. As an old person, that's kind of a joke. We we say that I'm an old person, but um, I'm not that old, okay? Or I just look really good, and you guys should pay me to find out what my skincare routine is. Um, one second. You both, you both are like extremely patient as you get older and then, um, posture check. That's fair. You're extremely patient when you get, when you get older, uh, you know, I think your patience increases, but then there's also that point. Like I, I only have so much time left. Like I'm not going to spend my whole life, like trying to figure out how to get Emacs and Nix, Right. So, you know, there's, there's that, that balance. Okay, so anyway, this is what I'm getting down to. Emacs with packages from use package means, if I understand it correctly, that we can. <laughs> Nix is great. Nix is good. Nix is love. <laughs> I don't. That that'll be a very interesting poll, but sure, we'll we'll go for it. Poll. Okay. Nix is good, great life. Okay. We've got one minute. We'll, we'll go two minutes. Um, and we'll, we'll create the poll. Okay. This is going to be interesting. This is what happens when you have channel point redeems. Um, Ooh, I forgot. There's a channel point redeem I want to add. I'm not going to remember unless I do it right now. I think this will be fun. Uh, let's go here. 
we'll go community no viewer rewards i always forget where this is channel points <clears throat> manage rewards uh add new custom reward switch testing choose from 28 keys 28 switches I better say keyboard that you want to hear and see on stream I don't know I just thought it would be fun it's something we did last week I have a switch tester it has 28 different switches on it uh, I'm too lazy to find a better image, so we just create that, and we're done. Okay. All right. Let's see. Where's the Where's the poll? What did we get? Two said good, and one said life. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, that's fair of me. There's definitely a matter of technology and you know, cultural influence on attention span as a revolutionary poll. Okay, so if I understand this correctly, to get back to the matter at hand, uh, my use package calls will just simply be translated through this overlay into installing those packages using Nix, and I don't have to think about, I don't have to like, define every single package in my Nix config itself. Is that fair, Nix? Is that fair, Nix, Flakes? Okay. Let's do it. That cookie's pretty darn dry. I feel like I had this one before and it was much better. I don't know what happened. I guess I just waited too long to eat this one. Let's see. Best by April 12th, 2024. Okay, not expired. I don't know. It's dry. It's fine. Um, right, since, since it's one-to-one -one in terms of package names, right? Yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay, so here's where I have to figure out how how this even works. Add the following lines to your NixOS configuration.nix. Of course, I'm not using NixOS. I'm on a Mac, hashtag work pays, and we're gonna figure out how this part works. But I want to use, I use Flakes, so so they don't have like a section on how to use this with flakes. I feel like this is one of the Nix rabbit holes. Like, all right. Is there something special I need to know about using an overlay if I'm using a flake? They don't, but it's easy to do. Okay. Overlays are Nix functions, which accept two arguments conventionally called final and prev and return a set of packages. Overlays are similar to other methods for customizing Nix packages, in particular, the package overrides. <laughs> no, that's that's fair, Amit. Yeah, I would say I would say that uh, UK English had a a uh, much larger impact on the, well, I'd say the entire Asian subcontinent, right? But especially India. Uh, so that's, that's understandable. Just a tiny bit more impact than American English. Okay. Uh, basically overlays just mean you override the set of packages and Nix packages either to extend it or to modify certain packages. Okay. 
Um, interesting. Interesting. Okay. In a Nix flake, Nix packages will be coming from the inputs, so it is common to write something like let packages equals Nix packages dot legacy packages dot system. Uh, Nix packages dot legacy packages dot extend overlay one dot extend overlay two. Okay, I get it. So you're just saying dot extend with the overlay name or using the import function. Import Nix packages, inherit system, overlays equals overlay one, overlay two. <laughs> it's funny. Okay. Oh, in home manager. Here we go. Here we go. Home manager mentioned. Next packages dot overlays equals final prev overlay goes here. Okay. I feel like this is confusing as anything else already. So I have packages up here. This is home manager. So let's just pretend I'm doing something like this to start with. Um, and I'm guessing since that's more like defining your own overlay, I'm going to do something more like, okay, well, it's just here. I mean, this is how they did it. I don't know if this makes sense. Okay. So first go back to your flake. You like the import sec syntax like this one. Okay. So I'm just going to, I'm going to copy this, but you might want to manage the input with Nix. Okay. That's fair. Um, so by my flake, do you mean the flake dot Nix, perhaps the actual flake? Oh, here we go. This is actually making possibly more sense. Inputs Nix packages dot URL, right? And I'm going to add a new input. And I feel like this is maybe where I want to do the Nix packages. Since I have the URL, do I just want to put overlays here? Equals. Hey, RCH Zindex. Thanks for the sub. I really appreciate it. And thanks for the follow yesterday while we were doing uh, Nix at night, I imagine. Um, no. <laughs> Point it to Emacs overlays. Okay. So... Uh, I usually say epic, actually. Yeah, I usually say epic. So Emacs overlays dot URL. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out how I pos. There's, there's just no effing way I could have figured that out on my own, right? It's just something that I'd have to start figuring it out on my own. It's by understanding Nick's fundamentals. <laughs> I love statements like that. Um, no, I think this is fine. Um, okay. So maybe I would say something like Emacs. Okay. I like Emacs overlays. It's, it's descriptive dot URL equals. And then that's when I'm going to take this whole thing. Maybe. Now, of course, here we used a string, so I guess I'm going to use a string, even though they didn't in theirs. Um, oh, okay, Nix provides. Oh, that's why it's that way. Okay. 
So that's why they did it that way. Um, I feel like if I'm going to archive master tar GZ, then that's probably not necessary. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. Okay. So I have Emacs overlay, right? Okay. And I don't need that. It's just GitHub colon Emacs overlay. Okay. This makes sense. Okay. So similar to home manager dot URL, Next packages URL. I have an Emacs overlays URL. It's part of my inputs. Good to know. So now that I've done this to my flake dot I should be able to go back to home manager. Oh, you want to see something in system? Okay. Um, is this killing you without Nix mode? Very much so. <laughs> we can add it real quick. Let's just do that. <laughs> um, I'm surprised it's not already in this config because I stole this from a friend of mine a long time ago, and he was like super ridiculous into basically everything uh, functional programming. So we'll just do this. We'll put it here. Next, use package next mode and sure T. Okay. And I, <laughs> this, you'll probably hate this next flakes, but like what I usually do, um, oh, do I need to do that as well? Okay. mode it's not smart enough to just know when it's supposed to use nix mode uh a lot of times i add it to my config like this and then i manually install from from melpa um but even though my use package is supposed to also just like install it for me um Okay, so I'm interested to see what happens, though, if I do just do it this way and then eval region. Yeah, okay, this is fine. We'll just eval this region. It should it should just download this for me. Okay, we're good. How about it? How about it? Emacs working like I would hope that it does. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to have to exit my uh save just exit all my nix opens and then we'll reopen them okay well it's something i i don't feel like it actually is using nix mode it just is using fundamental still probably hmm that's weird it's okay we'll just we'll just do this for now Well, yeah, it went in. It gave me a little bit. OK, so we're we're doing something. Uh, maybe on restart, but it shouldn't it shouldn't really make a difference. I'm a little confused. TS mode. It, what's I don't I don't want TS mode. Oh, tree sitter. OK, <laughs> I thought you were talking about another TS and uh, I'm allergic to that one. OK, uh, latest Emacs has it. Yeah, like uh, this is twenty nine one. But I don't know if 30 is even out yet. But yeah. They're like using next Nix TS mode or whatever. There's another one. Okay. Well, this 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 will <clears throat> this will get us going for now. <clears throat> yeah. 
Uh, I tried using Tree Sitter for a while, and my system just absolutely hated it. Absolutely hated it. Oh, 30's out. Well, we can probably get that when we actually install it using uh, Nix, right? We'll get 30 through Nix. Okay, so let's open up Darwin Nix. <clears throat> Okay, and we'll just force Nix mode for fun. Oh, there was some sort of error that it printed in my messages. Maybe that's why it did that. File mode specification error, invalid regex, trailing backslash. Oh, okay. So it, it, there is a problem with this. Huh, interesting. Hey, Allison, what's up? How's it going? Allison loves coming in and just like redeeming any new channel point redeem I just happen to have. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can do that in a second. Um, so it's definitely this that it hates for some reason. The fire is there. I've squished everything. I've squished everything in my, if, if people have been here before, you'll notice, I've squished everything in my uh, scenes now where, where I've, I've cropped my camera. Yeah, it hates this for some reason, but that's fine. Should we pretend that GPT-4 knows anything about Emacs real quick? Let's just see. Let's just see what 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 ridiculousness it comes up with. So I have this in my Emacs config, but when I open a .nix file. Oh, that's funny. You probably wrote that, Nix. Okay, let's just see if GPT knows this. Uh, it doesn't load a. It doesn't load into Nix mode. How can I fix this? <clears throat> okay. Okay. Let's go, GPT-4. Little single quote action. What's hilarious is it said it's it's missing the closing double quote, which is a lie, but that's okay. <clears throat> um, okay. So let's try this. Uh... Go back and do a little eval region and see if that changes anything. Uh, Darwin.nix. <laughs> it could be it could be because it has both now, and I would actually have to restart Emacs in order for it to work correctly. Okay, we might as well find out. We've already invested some time. We'll restart Emacs. What the hell? <clears throat> we'll do it. It's been a while since you guys have been able to see the glory of an Emacs restart on this on this stream and how slow my Emacs config is. Yeah, I don't doubt it. I'm hoping that's one of the things that I get fixed within this whole Nix arc. All right, I haven't updated my my streaming command to make my window the right size yet. <clears throat> there we go. <clears throat> yeah, um, so 
I don't pay for hardware, right? I've said that probably a lot. Um, let's go. Nix mode. Auto loaded. Restart fixed it. Um, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. But what's really great is I was on a call the other day. Uh, I think this was actually just on Friday and my system like totally crapped out like a work call. And it's like, you just need a couple of those to be like, you know, I think it's time. I think it's time that we upgrade, you know? So <clears throat> fingers crossed. We, uh, we'll get ourselves a new system paid for soon. So anyway, um, Okay, so here we are in Darwin.nix, and you wanted to see something here. Anything we need to change about this? Exactly, purplish. If I can get like the the basics of this, uh, you know, we we'd be happy. We'd be happy about it. Like if I get my basic Nick setup done, planning so far ahead, I just I'm acting as if I'm going to get a new system, right? Um. Okay. So add more Nix modules here. Okay. Got it. I feel like that's maybe a a hint for me. And. That's where home manager config slash slash. Um, okay. Like this one up here on seven. I just used up arrow, by the way. I used up arrow to get all the way there because sometimes I'm not thinking on 17. Okay. Um, Oh, right. Home manager config. Okay. So. Wait, what does this slash slash do? What is what does slash slash do guys? Oh, yeah, you're right. Total wrong slash. It means we're appending to home manager config. Okay, got it. So home manager config is probably a uh, shit. I forgot what they call them. Uh, a list of some sort, right? And this is kind of like merging our list with their list type of thing. Attribute set. There you go, anchors. Coming in. Coming in with the knowledge. Um, okay. So we're going to say underscore module dot args equals inherit inputs. Okay. So we're just telling Nix to expose inputs to home manager. Okay, that makes sense. And then we can go into Home Manager Nix, which I don't have open anymore. Okay, so let's make sure I understand. Just putting this together for myself. We appended to Home Manager config module.args inherit inputs. That's basically just giving inputs into the home manager config module, maybe you could say. Um, and now we're back at home manager .nix. Okay. I don't know if I can figure it out, but we're going to try. Okay. So I have inputs. Oh yeah. This is what I, this is the other piece I need. I need to look at my flake .nix. Let me think through Let me cook for a minute. We have emacs overlays dot URL. Okay, this makes sense. And 
then I mean, this has imports, import. I mean, what I would assume I'm going to do, and I could be completely wrong, but what I would assume I need to do is something like copy this and then URL equals emacs dot da da dot URL. That would be my that would be my guess. <clears throat> how how off is that? There's a better way. Add home manager user settings here. Okay. Okay. As in, this might be the case. All right, so let's add inputs to the first line. Oh, right, right, right. So we're gonna need inputs here, duh, right? And then our input is still inputs. I called it inputs emacs overlays dot URL. Let me just put that somewhere so I don't forget inputs dot emacs overlay dot url okay right since we exposed it to the module we can take inputs we can use it there and then so we do want this nix packages dot overlay okay i know i know this is not where it's going to go but it's still there and then am I going to follow their import syntax from here? Because it's the right way to do it, anchors. I'm just kidding. I have no clue. Okay, I'm just pretending. I'm just pretending that we want this import built-ins dot fetch tarball, but maybe this is already already done for us. I'll just start here. Let's not forget my semicolon. And we need a semicolon here too. Okay. Is this is this the way to do it? Or is this not the way to do it? Okay, so I don't even need all of that. Ooh, okay, love it. Um, all right, so we don't even need this or that. We're gonna do a little J there and we're just going to say overlays. And go here. <clears throat> and I don't remember what I actually called it. So let me, I said Emacs overlays. Does that, why did I do that? I feel like that doesn't make sense. It should just be overlay. There's not two of them. Uh, Emacs overlay dot. Now, should, is this supposed to be overlays? Why would overlays work here? Oh, I see. Overlays is right here. Is that my hint? Nix packages dot overlays equals. Okay. Oh, they have a flake dot nix. This is what I have to get used to is reading all of this shit. Okay. Let's go. Inputs. Got it. Outputs. Self. Nix packages. Nix packages stable, flake utils, in overlays equals. Okay. Right. Okay. Here's the overlays thing that they put here. So they have a default, an Emacs, and a package overlay in their overlays attribute set. And that is what they are exposing. 
if I understand this correctly. Okay. It is an overlay. Oh, because I actually just want the other thing they, they defined here. Um, I just want the default, so that's why I'm going to choose overlay. Yeah. Okay. We'll just try overlay. We like to we like to live with defaults. I feel like it's it's more idiomatic in these lists. They seem to like their spaces before and after, huh? Nick's Nick's likes this for some reason. I guess it makes sense since there's no like uh no separator. <laughs> we'll add a formatter later. Don't format my code for me, Nix. Come on. Okay, so we're here. I feel like Okay, so let's let's just go. Let me just read this for a second. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, interesting. So this is saying if there's, if you're using Linux on 8664, it's going to add this shit to it. Okay. Otherwise, it just adds these. Okay. Cool. So let me just go back to the Emacs overlay readme before we do this next part just because I'm trying to process this a little bit. Okay, good enough, good enough. I think I processed 10% of it. Okay, so now we have Emacs enable equals true. I feel like for now, I just wanna get rid of that. I guess I could have commented it out, but it's not like it was, it, it's not like that'll be hard to fix in the future. Um, <clears throat> I do need to start actually making commits to my Nix config just so that I stop, uh, that just so, you know, like, you know, version control, you know, there's like benefits to it and stuff. Um, Yeah, I'm not sure. Can I see what they're Can I see what they're they're at? How do I find out where they where they're at? Um Okay, did I go too far up? <laughs> Should I just go back to where these we were talking about unstable? Emacs overlay, okay, right. I saw that listed somewhere and then I couldn't find it because I'm dumb. Maybe it's, nope, it's not that repos directory oh it's just repos in the thing got it okay so let's see emacs unstable let's start here version 29190 okay cool probably what i'm gonna want an emacs master i would imagine is the default version 2023-1211 No, that doesn't make sense. I'm guessing it's actually commercial Emacs is the default. No, that doesn't make sense either. Emacs master is Git. Oh, right. So, uh, I mean, 29190 sounds reasonable. Commercial Emacs is a spin off. Okay. I don't always know these things. 
<clears throat> so if I just do default, I guess I'm still a little confused as to like what the default is in this scenario. But maybe they explained it and I just didn't read, which is definitely, definitely my style. Default. Default's a really good thing to search right here. <clears throat> I know, right? Package overlay. Emacs overlay. Okay. Emacs get and Emacs unstable is built from the latest master branch and oh okay so I definitely want I don't want Emacs get I want Emacs unstable for sure. Now I could choose Emacs stable but I don't even see that listed and that's where I'm a little I'm a little confused. That's the part that I'm getting confused at right now is like if it's not even listed how am I supposed to know what the fuck it is? It's just the latest Emacs, right? I just wish I knew what version that was. Is what would be in Nix packages? Ah, okay. So there's a way to find out what's in Nix packages. I just don't remember what it is. <clears throat> Nix OS search packages. Is this the way I do it? <clears throat> Emacs. Nice. Okay, so this is why. This is why I, when I did when I did it the normal way, like what I have currently without using the overlay, that's what I got is twenty eight point two. So I definitely want unstable. I could I could do. I mean, this is on twenty nine one anyway, which is what unstable's on. And since I'm using their overlay, I might as well use unstable from them, right? Okay. I think I think that's our answer. Is I want I definitely don't want to go back to 28 if I'm already on 29. Um oh was there and click on the unstable channel. Oh, right here. Nice. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> You mean where it says channel? Is that what you're talking about? Things I don't know. Yeah. So it's 29.1. Well, I don't think I did. Well, when I up when I uh, installed it normally, it did not use unstable, I'm pretty sure. But where would I have defined that I want unstable? Yeah, so like I'm guessing it'd be here, right? Nixpackages.url, yeah. So this is what is, is here. Yeah, so let's just use Emacs unstable. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Or I could change NixOS 23.11 to unstable. I think, but basically everything assumes unstable by default. Okay. Yeah, I think, hmm, here's the thing. I, I definitely prefer stable packages, but I know a lot of times people's definition of stable is very different. And from Nix's perspective, if I remember correctly what BG told me, is that unstable is really just a matter of like, these are things that we're pretty sure work, but we're not like completely sure that they work, right? Okay, that makes sense. All right, I think we're just gonna go with unstable from there. I think we're just gonna change this to unstable. So let's see if I can figure this out. If my Nix packages dot URL is currently this and I want it to be unstable, how do I do that? Um, let's let's see. Nix packages.
I'm just going to start with searching unstable. I'm pretty sure this is what BG asked me if I want to do unstable or not, and I didn't at the time. I mean, this is Nix packages slash Nix. Oh, oh, wait a second. Nix. Oh, let me think about this. Slash Nix OS 23.11. Okay. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm going to say that it's probably just going to change that to unstable and then I'm I'm done. That would be my guess. Is that instead of all of this. Either I change this to NixOS dash unstable or I just change this to unstable. That would be my guess. Um, I'm just interested to see what's in this flake dot next. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. Sure. I mean, it's just going to break if it doesn't actually work, right? I could. I could, or the overlay also gives me a chance of staying on stable, and uh, I can just add it as an option to the overlay that I want to use on stable, and then it would give me Emacs 29 through the unstable channel that way. I don't know if the overlay supports me overwriting the package, but I bet it does. I think I saw a piece on that uh, in the readme. Okay, yeah. Services.emacs.package, packages.emacs-unstable. I imagine I could say like packages.emacs-29 if I wanted to. I would say that that's reasonable. Okay. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to start here and I think I've got Emacs enable equals true. Now this, this might completely not be even close to where I need to end up. But we're just going to go ahead and do a check on this and see what happens. Nice. Love it. Um, yeah, little 422. Four, two. Okay, no commit found for SHA unstable. Okay, this makes sense. Um, I, I just made a guess as to how to do it, and I was wrong. I decided to just go to unstable, but I just decided to try this as unstable, and that was not the way to do it. Isn't that surprising? Um, so obviously, like, there's a matter of, like, either tags or branches or something that I'm not thinking through here. Yeah. NixOS dash unstable. All right, let's go. Let's go. I don't I don't need anybody to tell me what to do. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm putting it together. First try, exactly. Okay, downloading. Let's go. Well, I certainly downloaded something. No, this is the this is the part where it builds, but I don't realize it's building and it just looks like my system 
is going to take forever, which it might. Just building Emacs real quick. I'm guessing. I mean, it might be building other things too. I don't know. Since I changed to unstable. It's, it's possible some of the other packages that I have, anything else that's different between normal and unstable. Stable and unstable is also getting getting changed. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah no that's fair um i i don't know is that probably what it's doing the first time i did it with emacs 28 it was not it was not hard uh slow <laughs> got some scanner code going in here nice Okay, I don't know how long I'm willing to wait for it to do something. Java Trojan. Get wrecked, right? Unbelievable. Windows virus, it's totally safe. Well, Theo, you are uh, you're very committed to this. I'll give you that. Dude, we're so we're so good. You guys you guys thought this would take a really long time. <laughs> oh fuck. <laughs> okay. Value is a function while a set was expected. Okay, fine. What the hell does this mean? Theo was just like literally, literally timing this out. To think it took that long to just unpack. Yeah, exactly. Value is a function while the set is, uh, is expected. Like, is this something that I'm able to effing fix? Because, I mean, I don't have I don't have any of this. This is all somebody else's code. I didn't do this. Who did this to me? Um, <laughs> how's it going, Theo? Hope you're doing well. There are messages are hope. Yeah, value is a function. Stack trace truncated. Blah blah blah. Okay. I mean, I just I don't even know where I'm supposed to go at this point. That's the problem. Okay. I mean, I could see I could do this show trace to see the full trace, I guess. Or add debugger. Okay. Okay. Didn't like me. We'll just do show trace this time. Cached failure of attribute. Do with it. I'm guessing this has to be before. I don't know. Nope. <clears throat> I don't understand. 
I guess not. This is a Mac OS problem. Okay. This is so gonna work. Maybe going to unstable was the bad choice. Maybe I should change it back and just go back and then we'll just define Cause I don't want this to take up my time from, you think I'm, I'm, am I giving up too quick? It's probably what you told me to do. Uh, where, when did you tell me to do? something oh you mean when i was in system.next okay <clears throat> darwin it's the module arg you think oh okay value is a function while a set was expected okay I mean, this looks like a set. <laughs> like if this looks like a function, I'd be like, okay, we might have something here that we added. Hmm. Okay, just out of interest, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna, did I save already? I think I already saved. Yeah, NixOS 23.11. All right. Let's go back and just check this just just for the hell of it. Of course, now it wants to rebuild everything. Cuz I changed I changed what I'm using. That's really annoying. Okay. I mean, expected, but annoying. Um Okay. Yeah, not the issue here. Um, hmm. Maybe I should do this in a dumber way and then, and then we can see if this is something else I have to fix. A uh, different way of passing inputs, yeah. Um, how can I inherit inputs? Okay, we'll just start by moving, removing all of this. We're going to need one of those. Okay, inputs dot home manager, Darwin modules dot home manager. Home manager config, import module, home manager dot nix. Okay. I feel like there was another way that BG had me add inputs. Yeah. Um, You mean the very top and chain? No, you mean this, right? You gotta mean mean this. Yeah, okay. All right. Because now I'm passing my own set of inputs from it. Okay, this makes sense. Um, 
of course, now that I went back to this and it's not even the problem, it's probably going to be pretty mad about everything. Let me just let me just stop this. I don't need you anymore. How do, how do you how do you stop? You're not going to stop. OK, fine. Um, give me a second. Hey, cheering Cheerios. How's it going? What was I doing? I know I was doing something. Oh yeah, I was gonna change this back to unstable. Is this, I mean, it's just a check, so it shouldn't really matter. I don't, I don't know why it's not letting me exit this process. I'm kind of mad about it. Chillin'. We're working on some Nick stuff right now. I know, right? Five year old machine. <laughs> now I have no. Oh, God. I exited the. <laughs> now I really don't know what happened because I exited the. The freaking window. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Let's get back into it. Just keeps getting better, right? All right. Yeah. F that. We're back to unstable. No idea what happened. Updated input Nix packages. Okay, here we go. Um, we're getting somewhere. BG says I should always check. No, he didn't really say that. He said it's fine to just switch, but I just rather, I just rather do a check first. It's it works with my my risk tolerance. All right. Mm. Okay, it hates this. Without require. Oh, I have to add. <laughs> I was wondering why I saw that so many places. Um. This error sucks. Like, where does it even tell me that this is in darwin.nix? Oh, no, it says home manager.nix. Okay, so I, I need to change that in home manager.nix. Home manager.nix. So it's not the, it's not my argument order. You're saying that's not my problem? That doesn't matter. Um, Time for some lambdas. Okay. Like right here. Oh, should I should I do it in Home Manager? Oh, okay. So here I I do want to. Oh yeah, I don't have that in there, effects Reno. It's uh it's a Ergodox easy. I've had it for like eight years. It's just using MX Browns. It works. Gonna upgrade soon. But it it's been nice to me. Um, so I need to remove the inherit inputs. Okay. I like easier. Easier is good. Huh, <sighs> slow burn. This is this is gonna teach if I have any zoomers here, this is just gonna teach you guys like what patience is, you know? This is patience. It's a slow burn. How 
half half joking. I don't expect to teach Zoomers anything. Okay. <clears throat> So we're going to make this a function that takes some args and then we're going to go here and say inherit inputs and then merge that with our args. <clears throat> Or no, let's try yes. <laughs> love it, Nix. I love your confidence. All right. Evaluating derivation. <laughs> Zero conf. Okay. Fuck. Okay. Function anonymous lambda called without required argument packages. So same issue here. It's basically just thinking there's no way that you've really added inputs to this home manager, as far as I understand it. Unless, unless of course, argument order actually does matter, which I'm, I really doubt it does, but let's, let's just, let's just pretend it, it does for one short second just for my own sanity. Um, yeah, it doesn't. I know. I know. I just, I had to see it, okay? I had to see it with my own eyes. All right. So we're not going to import at all. Like, we're not going to import home manager at all? <laughs> the way kickstart.nix does it is bad. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> I'm going to tell BG you said that, Nix. Um, I'm just going to comment it out. <laughs> you got him on the Nix. Nice. <laughs> Ansible. Oh. Never had to deal with it. Okay, so we're back to this uh, home manager config business. And we're gonna wanna add something to this, apparently. We're at 496 followers, by the way. If there's four people that aren't aren't following me but watching the stream, we could hit that 500 right now. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'm here. I'm not seeing I'm not seeing where it says like home manager config at all. So so where where do I actually put this this line? Oh, home manager config was my import. Never mind. Never mind. Scratch that. Don't answer me. You probably already did. Effing delay. Effing delay. All right. Inherit inputs imports equals module home manager dot nix semicolon ending semicolon 
hundred percent confidence. All right, here we go. Here we go. <clears throat> Just wait for it, guys. You need a formatter. That's all Anchors has to say. Oh, uh, what? Oh, because I'm not using... It's because my home manager is not on Unstable. Okay, that doesn't matter. Yeah, so I can fix that. It's going. Look at that. Blazingly fast. Okay, it's not that fast. I mean, the download's fast, but that's not my computer's responsibility. Okay, okay. Nice. Failed to build. Love to see it. All right. We got somewhere, though. Um, do those errors actually matter? He's like, run it again. <laughs> As I was just saying that my network's the only thing that's good about like my computer. It wasn't me, though. It was them. It was definitely the other side. It's not my fault. <clears throat> Fiber. Fiber internet. Connectivity. Beautiful. <clears throat> Take this moment to fix my hair. Okay, okay, we're so back. <clears throat> it's installing Ruby. You need it. Much more consistent. It's probably true. <sighs> Unfortunately, I had Ruby before, I'm sure of it. F you, F you, what the heck? Networking issues, come on guys, come on. It still tried to do more this time. The hell is that error? <laughs> what the hell is that error? Okay, let's just see, let's just see where we're at. What do we have in here? We have Emacs. I'm just going to try opening this one and see what see what happens. Oh yeah, right. I didn't actually run the switch yet. So this is going to be this is going to be the same shit that I had before. Classic me. 28.2. All right. Uh, you genuinely, you know, I am here. Oh, beautiful. I got, I got a, uh, a seg fault on Emacs or something. What did it, what is it really? I don't know. It just quit unexpectedly, but that was because it's probably broken. Okay. Let's do a, let's do a switch and we'll pretend that everything's fine. It's trying again because because it failed. It's doing other things. It's just because my home manager isn't matching uh, the other thing. That's the only reason this error is happening. Just kidding. Man, this download speed sucks right now. What the hell? Let's do a speed test. WTF is eating all my download speed. AT&T Fiber. What's one way to slow this down even more? Run a speed test while I'm trying to do this. It's not, it's pretty bad. It's not terrible, but it's a little bit bad. Uh, does it leak my IP? I don't know, it might. I don't care. Two sixty two. It's not terrible. <clears throat> I 
Yeah. I've leaked all sorts of things. The IP is probably not the worst thing. It's always good to have less people watching. Okay, that's that's a joke. You know, you guys don't have to leave. But Yeah, it's definitely dynamic. Okay. Look at this. Six it's just dying on 650.4 to 650.5. Two people left. <laughs> uh, they're like, uh, leaking IPs. I just can't. They, yeah, they have everything they needed. Oh, come on, guys. Come on. Give me something here. OK, it finally changed something. I guess it's just building. I guess that's what's happening. OK. I think this worked. I think we did it. Check, check lied to me. Check was saying you're, you're not doing well. And I was actually doing totally fine. This is exactly why I do not go to the doctor right here. Go to the doctor. They're like, oh, things are, things are bad. Things are real bad. Totally fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. Emacs loading. You can see the little white screen. That's that's the Nix installed Emacs that you see there. Oh, oh, this might just work. Probably because it's actually the right version. Come on. This is normal. This is literally normal load time for me, by the way. This is not abnormal. Um, okay. Okay. We're really close, really close. It hates some things about general, but other than that, it's not, it's not too bad. Yeah. I really need to clean up my Emacs setup. That's no, that's no joke, but I figured maybe, you know, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll get there. There's some things it hates about general, but other than that, we're okay. I probably just need to update some packages, to be honest. But now this is when this is when we can uh, maybe do some of that. OK, so. Um, it probably is. It probably isn't. We could just try an update right now just for fun. Um, what is it? Package update. Package upgrade. Uh, no, it's, yeah, it's keybind thing. Yeah. Upgrade package general. I forgot to do a refresh content. So, <laughs> um, okay. Well, it still did something for me. Um, it was 2023, March 11th. All right, let's do a package refresh contents. Let it run. <clears throat> and just, just see if we, we got anything new. Okay. We'll try again. Full on Emacs, Emacs next stream today. How about it? I didn't know what was going to happen today, but here we are. <sighs> Marmalade always takes a really effing long time. I don't even know. I don't even remember. I don't even know if I need it. Slow, slow as F. Okay. <laughs> Man, that's how this stream goes, Nix. Come on, you know. You've joined a few times. You know, you know how slow this stream goes. Okay. Added an overlay equals one hour. Yeah, that's fair. 
Oh, this is taking forever. Okay, how do I fix the whole thing with my home manager being the wrong version? Let's see if I can figure that part out. Guessing that's gonna be in my inputs, which I think was in Flake. And it's because here is here. And I probably want this to be not on 23.11. You couldn't care less, you didn't even fix it. That's hilarious. But I don't like warnings. The whole reason I switched from Bash to Z shells because Mac OS kept warning me. Still, still not done with that refresh contents on Marmalade. Unbelievable. Nothing like running two separate Emacs and like upgrading packages in one while using the other. Okay. Revert back to Nix 23.11? No. Then I have to build things again. Okay. Uh, home manager. Home manager Nix. Okay. Guess this is it. I'm trying to learn something here. Really? Okay. Am I really having bad internet issues? Latency just sucks. What is my partner doing in the other room? They, they're streaming on like eight devices right now. They're just trying to like eat up all the bandwidth in the other room. So is there like a unstable that I can just go to? No. No tags, love it. Um, please read the warning below. Nice. Oh, so there's not really a fix. That's kind of what I'm feeling. Um, interesting. Huh. So what if I just took off the release argument here, like the release part of this URL? Is that what you mean by, by just depend on head? Okay, this finally finished. Let's do a package upgrade on general again. Okay, that means there's no there's no upgrade available. So we did all of that work, and I don't even have a new effing thing. Unbelievable. Okay, anyway, uh, let's exit this one. And let's just try this. And I guess we'll live life on the edge. Go right to switch. <clears throat> and my entire system's about to blow up and it's gonna be Nix Flake's fault. And you know, what are we gonna do then? All right, I finished my protein cookie. We're moving on to seaweed. <clears throat> Gotta get your seaweed in. Okay. Confirmed that my partner is looking at pictures of rescues on the internet and just hoping that they're okay. We'll get there. We're opening seaweed. It's important.
This reminds me why I don't have the keyboard cam on for my terminal. Okay, here we go. Mmm. <clears throat> I noticed that this is native compilation, but oh, that was actually pretty fast. That was faster than it usually is. Oh yeah, no, it's literally just seaweed, seaweed sheets. Okay, no, it hates something about my general config. WTF, Emacs. I don't get this on my other one. Powerline.el. Oh, these are just warnings? Are these all just warnings? Why are you giving me all these dumb warnings? I don't care about all this. I don't want to know about all these ELISP warnings. Why did this come up? Okay. I could care less. Oh yeah, you've never had these? Oh yeah. It's literally just like, it's just nori, right? Like what they wrap seaweed with. Uh, sorry, what they wrap sushi with. And, uh, you know, it's basically just like flavor with almost no calories. Yeah, it's it's totally possible that it's just like a, a white person thing. <laughs> it's totally, totally possible. It's just like an American, an American middle class, like, we're going to make these, but like, nobody would actually eat them some other place. Yeah. Why is it going through all of my ELISP and saying everything's wrong? How, what, what the hell? Is this going to happen next time or did it just happen this, like it's still going. As of 29.1. It does seem like a lot of breaking changes, but what's weird. Okay, let's see what version this is. Uh, okay. Okay. This just says 29.1. Okay, this is the, the Nix installed one. And I'm like 99% sure I'm just on 29.1 here as well. 29.1. Now that doesn't mean that they're the exact same. Like they might have a patch version difference. But I don't get any of this when I open my other when I open this my normal Emacs. This is pretty bad. Um nice. Okay, anyway, uh, that's annoying. Let's just close this for now. Well, let's let's do one other thing. Let's just go into something. Let's go into Rust and see what happens. It's still it's still trying to print warnings. Um. Well, let me see. What what the hell are all these comp warnings? Comp warnings Emacs twenty nine dot one. <laughs> dude dude i installed neovim during the nix at night streams okay pm walls it's there okay it's it's right here see it doesn't even load you see how slow that was that's zero config neovim and it's that slow all right and I'm, I'm kind of being cheeky um how about it Still working better than Emacs right now. <laughs> it's just, it's my fresh install, okay? It's my fresh install. Okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 
five months ago. Oh, okay. These kinds of warnings happen when Emacs does native compilation. So that's the difference. The difference between the Emacs that I just installed and what I have is that this one was native comped and the one I have is not. Okay, I like this. I like that. Um, there is no error exactly, right? I mean, it says it's only going to do it once per Emacs file, but if it's every single time I open this up, that's, that's a problem. All right. Let me just try loading this one more time. And I just want to see if these all show up again. Uh, I swear I saw a thing that said it it was it it had native comp loading see see that little loading message come on come on it won't let me get to it it said something about native comp there but i could be completely it could just be lying to me This is the beginning of the warnings buffer. I don't want the warnings buffer. I want messages. Native compiled loading ISO transl native compiled elist done, but that not that it's possible this is not what it actually means. I don't know. Um Okay, so we definitely just got all of those going off again. I just got out of the buffer. Uh, right, this is still happening. Or maybe it finished. Maybe it's, maybe it's not gonna create new ones. My projectile's not out of date at all, right? 2019, that's reasonable. That's totally fine. <laughs> uh, now, is there like a nice... Um, attempt to delete the sole visible or iconified frame. Well, yeah, I'm trying to exit the effing program. Of, of course, that's what I'm doing. Okay, let me do that that time. Maybe I just hit the wrong key and I was just being dumb. That's certainly possible. Okay. Dude, it's usually it's usually just command Q, okay? Is Emacs unstable in Nix packages? Um use native comp. Yeah. Weird. Okay. I'm confused. But that's fine. Um 
So this is just going to be in my home manager under my Emacs package. Um, with tree sitter equals true with native compilation equals true. And just so that I'm learning something and not just following what people tell me, let's just look here. Emacs. Well, that doesn't that doesn't show me the thing. And Emacs dot overrides. Okay. Take self and super and returns an attribute set overriding the desired attributes declared by modules programs Emacs dot nix. Ah. Hold on a second. So I'm not using this in, in package. Wait, so I don't know if I understand you, but let me just, let me just try this. Okay. So you're saying I'm not doing it like this. Oh, it's package equals, okay. Right, because package is an attribute, right? Okay. Um, that's not what I was supposed to do. Are you saying that I'm wrong? Um, I know I haven't actually done it right yet. I'm just, I'm just saying. Programs.emacs.package. Okay. Um, and you said packages.emacs.override. Yeah. With tree sitter equals true. With native compilation equals true. Da, da, da. Okay. And that needs to be there, I'm pretty sure. Does that look right? Okay, cool. Um, One second. Okay. So what do you hate? <laughs> called, oh, okay, function anonymous lambda called with unexpected argument with native compilation. Did you mean with, okay, I just have a typo. Nice. Typo. Nice. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's see what happens here. <clears throat> let's see if anything different happens today. Okay, so yeah, we have all these warnings again, which again, like may not matter, but it also might give me an idea of things that I haven't updated that I actually need to. 
Um, so, <laughs> but I just did update projectile and it's still, it's still mad. But yeah, I think we just need to suppress them as well. I think you're right. Um, let's go into init.l and we'll use that set queue thing we saw on Reddit. And this looks as good a place as any to put it. Um, and we'll restart. Okay. What the F? Come on. Really? That didn't work. Comp async report warnings errors nil. It doesn't seem like that was correct. I thought that would just get all of them. But apparently that didn't that didn't actually matter. Oh man. Emacs, it's good. Believe me. We're just gonna keep updating everything. Let's see. Um, evil escape is probably what that is evil i mean i haven't updated evil in a while either but okay sure i don't know how much it matters okay let's just let's just do all this we'll update all of our evils <clears throat> and then it did seem like the warning stopped though. So it, it did seem actually like that just reduced the amount of warnings I was getting a lot by suppressing them with the set queue thing. <sighs> Evil collection has a lot in it. I don't even know how much I use it. I'm guessing I do. I, I think it I think it gives me a lot of a lot of good things. Yeah, non byte code errors now, yeah. Things that I probably actually do care about. Make sure to set evil want key binding to nil before loading evil or evil collection. Okay, I'm sure I've done that. Um, but we'll just restart and see what happens. So the set queued, at least at least the error suppression thing did do something. I should time this. Oh no, really? It hates something that happened. Oh, it probably changed something that I'm doing. Um void function evil add to a list. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that uh, you guys couldn't see this before. <clears throat> Whoops. I was using evil commands again. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I don't even remember what these are in Emacs right now. I remember what control S is. Okay. Control XS. I can do that. I can do this. And evil add. Nope. <laughs> are there good are there other good streamers on right now? I, I haven't I didn't see who was on. I know, right? 
Well, lurks always lurks always appreciated. Um, hmm. Oh, Prime's on. That's right. And Leo, yeah. Why do you hate me, Max? Why do you hate me sometimes? And you don't even have a wrap on, so I'm not even really seeing everything that's that's going on right now. Okay. Uh, it's going okay. We're trying to get Nick's. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to move all of my Emacs stuff to Nick's, and there's just kind of a lot to it and it's not necessarily emacs and nix's fault as much as like me not actually updating my config in a really really long time that's that's certainly a big piece of all of this um so yeah i think i think i'm just going to quit this and restart uh, no, I don't want you to save. Yes. Yeah, the next part, it doesn't seem to be the problem at the moment. It seems to be the Emacs part. <laughs> okay, so I got the same effing thing. Void function, evil add to a list. Let's pretend ChatGPT knows what it's doing. Boraz99, what's up, man? Hope you're doing well. And I am from California. I call people of all genders, man. So it, it happens. I grew up there anyway. I don't live there anymore. Otherwise, I wouldn't need a fireplace, right? Um... Yep, these are good debugging tips. <laughs> All right, let's try Google. Nah, fuck. Okay, that's not helping me. I feel like this is probably because I disregarded the thing they told me to do with evil collection <laughs> they literally told me to do something and i was like ah, i probably don't need to do that <laughs> so i think what i'm gonna try is this right here um okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm actually going to do a package is it package remove I don't remember what it is. Package delete. Oh yeah, it's a good call out anchors. Yeah, it's there. It's finding the package. I think it's, it is the thing it told me to do. Uh, so I'm just gonna delete evil collection and reinstall it. And then hopefully it will give me the thing that I was supposed to do again. Uh, I'd be really sad if this broke my normal Emacs right now too. I'd be sad, but hopefully this will this will tell me what I was supposed to do. Okay, that's backtrace. Let's go into like messages or something. Uh, what is it? Control X B. Um, <clears throat> uh. 
Oh yeah, I think it's actually my warnings buffer if I remember right. I think that's what they did is they put it in the warnings buffer. We really need a 24 hour Emacs config stream. That's fair. That's fair. Um, all right. What are my other buffers I have? Scratch, compile log, backtrace, but it wasn't there. I'd be really sad if I couldn't find this now that I got rid of it. I really doubt it's in the completions thing. I guess it could be in compile log. No, no, that doesn't help me. Uh, evil collection emacs 29.1. <clears throat> it's fine. Let me see if they have a thing here about it. No, this wasn't any of these. F. Let me just look at the issues real quick. Nope, doesn't look like any of that is the thing. Uh, yeah, so let's see. What is it saying for reals? It's saying it might, I think it might be an evil collection issue. Um, right, I don't have it open. I'm so used to the way that the rest of my stuff works. It's just when I when I uh, upgraded Evil Collection, it actually said, "Make sure you do this before you init before you init Evil Mode," and I just disregarded it because I assumed that was just like a normal thing. But I think it might have actually been like, "This is something that needs to be needs to happen on upgrade." And now I can't find that message and it might've actually been important. So that part is disappointing. So what it's saying is that evil, evil add to, yeah, doesn't exist, which means evil didn't initialize correctly for whatever reason. Um, Evil no longer exists. Use package evil. Evil mode one. Evil declare change repeat company complete. Okay. Evil surround. Sure. Evil define key.
Oh. Yeah, I actually don't even have... I think I installed Evil Collection and I didn't actually need to. I kind of remember this. I'm going to just try deleting Evil Collection and seeing if that changes anything. Even though I know it says the problem is with Evil Mode. But I'm just going to try this anyway. Yeah, that's it. That was exactly it. Evil want key binding to nil. I didn't do that. I don't know if that matters. I don't need to save that. Yes. <clears throat> I'm just going to start with deleting evil collection. And then I'm going to, yeah, nope, still hates me. So let's just do emacs.d and it dot l. Okay. Use package evil set progin. Um, okay. I think I can do this. I think it's just a set queue, isn't it? Evil want key binding nil. Now I might need that above use package. I tried to do a I tried to do an evil command. It's just muscle memory now. Uh, but we'll just try this. <clears throat> nope. That hates me still. Um let's see. Huh. Where do I even have the prog in? Oh, that's what you're saying. I don't need it. Um, so used to having autocomplete that it's killing me right now to do it this way. But that's okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try taking this out. Um, shit, I forgot. How to do this. And just putting it up uh, above here. Even though I, I don't think that's what I would really have to do, but sure. I'll just try it. Come on, you can do it. Nope, same effing error. So that wasn't the problem. Damn it. What the hell? All about it. Yep. This is those time this is the time where people are like, I'm so glad I just use Grug Editor. Um, but it's fine. I mean, according to this, it's like Prog in, set Q, evil want to scroll, da 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 load in it dot no error. Okay. Is this the problem with freaking native comp is that I just see all this stuff and I don't actually ever see like actual stack traces all right let's uh let's restart my other emacs and see if i'm having issues there as well with these new packages
Yep, same error. Sad. Um, okay. I guess I have general define key. I have, I have general before my Emacs. Maybe that's part of my problem. I mean, before, before, <laughs> well, that would be a problem, wouldn't it? Before evil. I think this is actually before evil. And that might be what's happening that's wrong. So let's let's take the, all this evil config and move it above general. Wow. Would you look at that? Okay, let's get a little bit smaller. Um not exec path from shell. Just this. Of course. Same thing. All right, did the other Emacs, did that have a different stack trace or anything like that since it's not native comp? Nope, same thing. So the native comp part of it didn't actually matter. Um, okay. This is very disappointing. Reading at buffer position 5706. Okay. I'm glad that I can click this and it does something for me. So it's in my use package evil. Um, let's just, let's just comment all this out here and let's just take everything out besides evil mode one okay and see what happens i guess i'm interested to see if I can just reproduce it by eval region and I can stop. I guess I don't know. I don't know if that worked or not. Let's, uh, I guess we just need to restart. All right, close that shit. And I'll continue with, with my system installed Emacs. I guess I have another Emacs open. Oh, this is, I still have the 28.2 Emacs open. That's funny. I was like, why are there so many Emacs on my screen right now? Okay. I never exited that. Okay. So even with this just being evil mode one, they don't care. They're saying, yeah, you're still effed. <sighs> Because you're you because you're evil. Huh. Ensure T in it. Config. Okay, we can try this. God, I miss I miss Vim keybinding so much right now. Okay. Means nothing, but let's try, yeah.
Um, okay. Oh, wait, this is, oh, fuck. That's probably what happened before. Clicking it didn't actually bring me to the right file before. That could have been. If you make your Emacs window a little smaller. Okay. Are you, are you like, like you want it this small? Is that, is that how people like it? I don't want to post it on Reddit, but you can. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, so this isn't even in my actual config. So that's why. This just loaded it. Now let's see what's actually in the config. Okay. So clicking that might have been, it's possible that I didn't actually do anything. Uh huh. Yeah, this is still, I never even, it never even commented this shit out. So this never even changed. Unbelievable. Okay. So let's do this to start with. Let's go back to where I was at before, just, just to make sure. Um, and then we'll, we'll go with Nix's suggestion after that. I doubt this is going to make a difference. I always forget that send. Oh, well, that actually the problem was because my config didn't load before whimsically is um, it wouldn't even recognize the syntax of Elisp. Literally, literally it broke. Like I tried, I tried, uh, I tried meta semicolon. It didn't work. We'll see if it'll, if it'll do that again. It didn't make sense to me because it's like, how is that possible? Uh, yeah, there's not an extra parens. I'm pretty sure I got it right. Yeah, it was fine. Um, let's see, is it working now? Okay, this time it did work. I don't know what was happening before. Oh, it's because I was in that load buffer. I wasn't in the actual init.l file, so that's why. It didn't recognize it as an elist file. Okay, so let's just try this real quick. Uh, set Q evil want key binding nil and config. Uh, evil mode one. And we'll just go here like that. And got the Emax crew in. Same effing problem. Okay. It's really weird. There is an extra paren? Where? I didn't see an extra paren. Oh God, it's already been two and a half hours. I gotta go soon. Um, oh, I did this twice, which obviously is not needed. Um, No, see, that's matched, and that's matched. 
and that's matched. I think my parens are okay. Where does buffer point? Yeah, let's see. Um, this thing's so dumb. I don't see the thing that it was there before. Before it was like, huh, I'm confused. Okay, so this is going into C. Oh, maybe it's maybe it was the difference between the native comp version and the other version. Let me try opening that again. See if it gives me a different one. Yeah, here we go. I don't get it. I didn't change my config. This was happening before I made any changes to my config. All I did is upgrade some packages. And now I'm getting this shit. This is very sad. I don't know what I want to do. I guess it could be. I guess this could be because of evil surround. We could try removing evil surround again. Packet. Or we didn't actually try that, but. The config you gave was from docs. Oh, okay. Of evil collection. Oh, okay. Um, I can't remember if I actually still have evil collection or not. No, I deleted it, but it didn't make a difference here between having it or not having it. It made no difference. Huh. Okay. I have evil escape, evil surround, evil. I mean, this is like a super, super new version of evil, so I wouldn't be surprised if there were bugs. Let's check. Let's check uh, evil's repo real quick. Evil Surround had um, an issue for 29.1. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Well, we could start by just deleting Evil Surround like I was about to do. Yeah. Willy nilly upgrading Emacs packages, just thinking that it would it would fix things that probably didn't need to be fixed. Yeah, that's correct, Absinthe. Yeah, this is my own Emacs config. That's the correct that's the correct treatment you deserve, Nightshade. Especially now that I'm getting cold snowy weather here. And we're not supposed to get that here. 
Um, evil add to a list. Just going to try this. <laughs> You'll remember that. I believe you. Oh, okay. But it didn't. What? Mm, uh, 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 uh. <sighs> okay, okay. We're getting somewhere. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. This is getting somewhere. These compiled.elc files were probably from when my packages were in a half upgraded state. Deleting them fixed my problem. Okay, give me a second here. Uh-huh. Okay. It's there. Uh, okay. I'm pretty sure I don't use the A-list function anywhere in my own config. Otherwise, I would hope that it would effing tell me. Evil normal state minor mode, evil normal state map. I updated general. Require evil states. Okay, okay. Uh, let me just try opening my config again. And just, just be so effing sure that I do not call evil add to a list anywhere. Okay, we're gonna solve this the correct way using ACK. Um, Emacs, dude, dude, what are you doing to me? Why aren't you giving me shell completion on emacs.d? Why are you hating me so much? I'm not dumb. It is dot emacs.d. Oh yeah. I forgot act doesn't give me shell completion. Oh, because I removed my bash completions thing because i was trying to make my shell faster bum bummer 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 okay it's fine um ack emacs d yes dash dash match evil add to a list dash l <sighs> no that's the worst thing that could have happened Okay. Um, Emacs C Sourcester, bro. This isn't. This doesn't even have native compilation on. Imagine not using rip grep. Yeah, it's fine. I like ack. I'm used to it. Um, I just never, I just never started using rip grep at any point. Um, okay. I was really hoping that that was my ticket. Evil global key maps, a list, evil, normal state, minor mode, evil, normal state map. 
sure require evil states. Again, it just asked me for the Emacs C source dir. Not what I was hoping for. Um, is evil states a package? But, 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 but. It's probably an evil collection, isn't it? Then why don't I have evil collection in here? Evil states. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> the axis of evil. <laughs> uh, that was awesome. Okay. <laughs> I mean, this is evil states here. Um, I just had to try that. Um, is there a package called evil states? Package install evil states. Nope, not a package. You'll love function names with the word maybe in them. Maybe do something. Okay. Damn it. I need to at least try to get this to work. Uh, I don't think I did anything important, so we're not going to save. Let's just open it again. I opened the wrong one. I meant to open my normal one. I don't care about Nick's right now. I'm trying to get Emacs to work again. All right. You gotta love when it says void function evil add to a list and then um hey Leo Stara, what's up? Thanks for the raid. I appreciate it. What were you guys up to? Yeah, I'm having some Emacs issues. I know, I know. Um, you coded PHP, that makes sense. Hey, Mohaira Ra Sharif. Um, yeah, so welcome Raiders. Uh, my name is, uh, Meta, Meta me, one of those. I'll occasionally say my first name. Um, I mostly stream functional programming stuff and Rust, uh, currently mostly doing OCaml and Rust, and I'm in the early stages of my Nix arc and struggling a little bit. I mean, actually so far, the Nix thing hasn't been the problem. Uh, it's that I upgraded some packages in my Emacs config uh, kind of willy nilly. And now I'm, I'm a little bit in a, between a rock and a hard place. Rust is not functional programming. It depends on who you ask, I would say, Roland. It depends on who you ask. Um, I'm definitely, you know, a fan, a fan of Rust, but, um, you know, your internet is dog shit. Ah, that sucks, Leo. I'm sorry. Come on. Doesn't, doesn't Sweden, doesn't Sweden have just the best internet in the world? Like every single house has fiber. That's not the case. That's what I'm led to believe. I'm sure it's not true. It's just, it's just what people try to to, to trick you into believing <laughs> it has, but it has one fiber. <laughs> you have coax. Yeah. I just got fiber this year after being on coax for the majority of the last, I don't know, 15 years, ever since coax was a thing after DSL. 
right? Uh, but they finally put a fiber drop in. So that was nice. That's true, Praveen. That's true. So, yeah, that sucks, man. I know. Uh, usually usually my, my issue is my system just totally screwing it up. But some of the connections just have 4G. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I had, I, I got decent down and up. Um, so what's funny is actually like the fiber drop is on the other side of the apartment from here. And so I, that's, that's totally fine. I, it gives me a break from being mad about Emacs for a minute. Um, so they put the fiber drop on the other side of the apartment. And, uh, so I've been trying to figure out how can I get a wired connection or something faster uh, than just Wi-Fi because it's not that great and I didn't want to do a Wi-Fi mesh network for different reasons. Um, so I ended up doing, I, I realized, I found this thing on Amazon that I could just have a coax LAN, like it's basically like a LAN over coax, right? And so I actually am now using coax between my fiber drop and my office. And it did like probably double, maybe even triple uh, my my bandwidth compared to Wi-Fi. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now everything in my office is wired and I'm I'm happy. But um doesn't mean that things don't suck sometimes. Um some of the Eurodoxus are really bad also with split speed. Ah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, Nightshade. That's most people's problem is they'd love to be off. They'd love to be off Comcast or whatever charters called these days, main cable providers in the States. But everything else sucks until you get fiber, basically. Okay. Uh, so yeah, right now we upgraded Z Emacs packages and we are at this dumb error that I've been trying to solve for probably 45 minutes at this point. And it's not being so nice to me. Byte recompile directory package user dir nil force. Do I just add this? Like, am I just going to do this in at the top of my config or just eval it? Okay. So uh, eval, I forgot how to do this. I guess I can just put it in a buffer and then eval it. I can't give up on evil. Byte recompile directory package user dir nil force. It's literally impossible to make fish your default shell with Nix. Get wrecked, Dylan. All right. Eval region. Okay. We're going to do this. This is going to work. I just know it. It's doing so much work right there. This started, Dylan, with me just trying to get Emacs to work in Nix, and then I started having all sorts of Emacs problems, and don't you dare say anything about that, all right? I don't know why I'm telling you this, as if you would be empathetic. All right. We're getting somewhere. Nothing like white unthemed Emacs just to stare right back at you. I'm glad you went through that, Dylan, instead of me then, because I'm probably just going to stay on Z shell until I can't, until I really, really need to move to fish or something.
All right. We're waiting on this. Oh, God. This is going to take a while. I have a lot of shit installed. Probably a lot of shit I don't need. I guess I could start going through my Emacs config while I'm while, while this is happening. No, of course I can't. It it takes over the entire frame, and I'm screwed. Can I get a new frame? Can I get a new frame and pretend that I can do stuff? No, of course not. That would that wouldn't be fun. <laughs> Time to just nuke dot Emacs. Uh... Hey, Patrick, OMG. OMG, Patrick, I can't believe you're here. OMG. Um, okay. Yeah, single-threaded Emacs beauty. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Um, hurts. It hurts. We could open... Oh, that's what I'll do. This is This is the trick. There's nothing wrong with this, right? I'll just open my other Emacs. No, I really don't want to screw this up. Oh, wait, we'll, we'll do this for the meme. Um, let's see. What do I have open? OCaml. All right, we'll talk about OCaml real quick. Let's see. Interrupted, interrupted, interrupted. I accidentally paste something into Utop that I didn't mean to. So it was kind of funny, like on a Discord that I'm on, like people mostly know Haskell and they're like, how could you have auto occurring, but also multivariatic arguments? Yeah, like multivariatic functions, right? Like multiarity is what we call it in Clojure. I was like, well, in OCaml, they could do this through optional labeled arguments. And then I posted all this. And of course, as usual, nobody actually responded to it. But, you know. I spread some knowledge about OCaml, so go me. All right. <clears throat> Fun fact, Utop is just a wrapper for a compiler libs module called top level. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, build more ergonomic REPLs. Yeah, that's very cool, Leo. That is very cool. Yeah, Emacs is still working hard, doing whatever the hell it's doing. Recompiling shit. Cleaning things up. I just saw something that said GraphQL, and I'm like really mad that that exists in my Emacs config somewhere. Um, okay. What was I going to do? Oh yeah, edit my Emacs config in NeoVim just for the meme of it and so that I don't have to wait for Emacs to stop doing what it's doing. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's see. I'll just open a new session. Uh, new, I think I can put the name here, right? I'm not I'm not good at I'm not good at this whole uh Tmux thing sometimes. I didn't do it right. Anybody surprised? Nope. Nobody's nobody's surprised. Okay. It's fine. Um in the dot emacs d in it L. Here we go. Some uh basic thoughts around syntax highlighting for Emacs Lisp. Very cool. We rewrite emacsd.now. <laughs> Dude, I don't know, man. It's like, should I just should I just go to Doom and just pretend that that's fine? All right, let's let's go through this a little bit. I know there's a couple places that really need cleanup. So we're gonna make both the Emacs and the and the NeoVim people happy right now. I mean, I'm editing my Emacs config in NeoVim. Yeah, I know Doom is bloat. That's what everybody says. But then, but then, here I am. Yeah, I used Zelda J for a while. Anandvedikdus 
Uh, but um, it broke something that I liked, and then I decided to go back to Tmux. Uh, Mattia Lorenzo, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so I don't, I did, I probably didn't do a very good intro. Uh, <laughs> no, man, I was just reading, I was just reading the username, Dylan. Come on. I probably didn't do a very much, very good intro when, uh, for the Raiders, but, uh, I have done a couple things that you guys might think is interesting. Those are two of them. Those are two of the things we have done. I think GitHub still points to him tall. Yeah. We did those two things. It was pretty fun. <clears throat> did it work? It's still working, dude. You forgot that I have an Intel based MacBook. It's still it's still going through here and trying and trying to clean things up. Twenty nineteen MacBook baby. Okay. Here we go. Idris was really key for you to get into types, yeah. For sure. I really liked Idris. I thought Idris was cool. I mean, not to say that I like completely understood it because I literally spent two days with it, but you know, like I know about like conceptually, I know about dependent types and it was cool to see how a dependent type system would work in the past, just like meta. Yeah. But I mean, I said this earlier, but I don't know if everybody was here, but my, my computer actually like really really had an issue on a work call on friday when i was just trying to like demo something and so like you know fingers crossed that's that's the end i need to be like yeah this is five years old now guys i think i think we need a new system so we'll see what happens we'll see how, how if that flies or not i mean yeah if work's pain i might as well I might as well see if they'll get me something. I mean, realistically, they'll probably talk me down to an M2. Let's be real. Aren't M3s just like stupid expensive? I don't know why I did it this way. All right, let's see. Uh, they'd have to do a 16 inch for me. Oh, it's the difference between the whole M3 Pro and M3 Max thing. All right. So the last system they bought me was between these two, as far as like the cost that they spent, right? So it's kind of like... Just like, just give me this thing and then we don't ever have to talk about it for years, right? Uh, what's this? That Yeah, this one's going to be out of the question. But maybe, maybe they do this. But realistically, this would be fine. But I, I... The 512 is sometimes not enough. And having the one, having the terabyte would be nice. <clears throat> um, I think it could be Privan, but like if work's paying, I'd probably just have them. I'd most likely have them just buy me an Apple, but I don't know. I don't know for real. Um... Crown Jewel is Tap Idris. Nice. Let's see what Leo is up to with Idris. A simple tap producer and consumer reporter for Idris. Nice, nice. Sweet. Yeah, it's going to be pretty hard to get people, to get Emacs people away from Lisp, right? That's pretty hard. Um, I I just wanna I just wanna point out we're at 
499 followers, by the way. 499. I mean, it shouldn't be that big of a deal to just go, okay, it finished. And I know it finished because it finally opened my new frame for me. <laughs> that I asked for a long time. <laughs> Unfollowed. Damn it, Nightshade, that's not what I was going for. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> okay, let's let's reopen this. Damn it. Same thing. We're just screwed. We're screwed at this point. Why does life hate me sometimes? All right, Prevan, see ya. Yeah, it's late for y'all. All right, I need to wrap up. Um, what am I going to do? What am I going to do for work? I don't even know, dude. Hmm. It's all right. I probably don't have to write that much code tomorrow. I'll just use my config list new of them. I definitely can't stare at something that's white all day. I know that much. Oh, wait, this is new. This is new. Invalid function, evil add to a list. This is a new error. Oh, yeah. Today is Monday, but it's um, it's a national holiday here. So I didn't have I didn't have to work today. Um, so we're still getting this whole, this whole thing. So this looks exactly the same, but it is at least using the new evil add to a list function. <laughs> at least it updated which, which invalid function it is. Oh my God. Okay. So maybe if I just reinstall evil again, I don't know. I don't think that's going to do anything for me. <sighs> I don't know what the issue is. It even found it. Invalid function, but then it, it finds it. It makes no effing sense. It's really, really annoying. Evil X, evil search, evil nil T. I don't know, man. I guess I could, let me, let me search evil ash add to a list in there in their issues real quick since that's what helped me find it last time i don't know how much this issue actually helped me but we'll try this Maybe I need to put it in quotes. Seems like there's too many, but I could be I could be wrong. Okay, better. So this was the issue we just looked at. Global markers are broken after lexical binding switch. I doubt this is this is it and it's too old. Actually all of these are too old. Most likely. Yeah. This is using the old A list. Bummer. 
Okay, let's just delete it. Um, okay, yeah. Package delete. Uh, evil escape. Um, package delete. Evil. Okay. We're just going to leave it there. Uh, reload. Oh, wait. I want to use the other reload anyway. I want to use the other Emacs anyway. Not the next one. Yeah, I don't know what happened, dude. Pretty bummed. I almost think I just want to rewrite my config from scratch. But I'll probably be disappointed if I do that. But it could make a nice stream still. I'm just letting use package install everything. Hey, 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 this is looking good. All right, all right, here we go. It's slow, but it still did some things. Um, okay, this is fine. I don't care about some of these warnings. All right, let's 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 just see if I have anything going for me at this point. Uh, let's open up Polly's code base. How about that? Okay, we're, we're looking good. We can J and K. Everything's looking pretty happy. We should have some, yep, it, load, it loaded everything. Rust Analyzer is ru running. Um, so here's my theory, Nix, and I could be wrong, but for some, like, because it doesn't actually make sense. Like I, okay, well, there's a couple things that we did, right? We did the thing where we did like the bytecode recompile malarkey on the whole user directory. So maybe that was something that did actually fix something. But once I deleted the evil packages and then I just let use package. What, what is that nightshade? Is that a drink? Is that like a hot toddy? But you like with one of those fireball candies in it? This is how much I know about alcohol. Um, anyway, what did we do? We just talked about it. I'm coming to, I'm coming back to it next. Okay. Yeah. So this time, instead of reinstalling the packages myself, I just allowed use package to do it. And then it seemed like it worked. I don't know if that's really what it is. I have a couple warnings here, but this is fine. I can deal with this. These are like compilation warnings anyway. Evil one visual car semi exclusive. Okay, sure, sure. So who knows? Um, so at the end of the day, I don't have evil collection anymore but I don't know how much that matters right now. I'll just see if I actually miss it or not. Okay, this makes me pretty happy. Let's just do one more restart, make sure that we're pretty happy about it. And then I wanna try starting the, the Nix version and see what happens with that. Dude, stop, stop going to there. I'm trying, I'm trying to do something. Just, just let me do it. All right. <clears throat> evil without evil collection is pretty annoying. Yeah, it probably will be. <laughs> we'll see how much I hate it <laughs> because evil collection does give me a lot that I probably just don't think about. Okay, no warnings. That was just the compile log because it was installing all that. So I could just add it back, but I'm not going to add it right now. I'll just see if it if it actually bothers me or not. When I find out that there's something that I can't actually use, then then I'll put evil collection back in. Okay, so there's 
There's the old normal, normally installed vanilla Emacs. Let's try the Nix installed Emacs and see what happens. This is looking pretty good so far. This is all normal. Okay, boom. Nix installed Emacs, used my config. And we're so, we're so back. Okay. Um, don't give me evil types warnings, please. Stop this. <laughs> Dang, man. Dang, RCH. Um, no, I appreciate it, though. I appreciate you being here. We we got there. We got there. This is the sunlight that you needed right here. Uh, I think we are about done with our sunlight, but we definitely get more than an hour. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty much closer to the equator than you are, I guess. Um, looking pretty good. Uh, Indy, Indy Diana Jones. Wow. Indy Diana Jones. All right, let's go. 500. We're so, we're so good. That's a, that's a pretty number. That's a pretty number. I appreciate the follow. Yeah. Looking at white Emacs for an hour covers your vitamin D needs. That's so true, Odie. Uh, nice. Indy. Indy Deanna Jones, Indy De Indy, Indy Diana Jones. How are you supposed to say this? Indy Diana. That's pretty hard. I think it's Indy Diana. I think it's a like a stutter. That's fair. Um. Okay, I'm ending it here. We we got it. Emacs working. Yeah, we got some of this shit going on. We'll deal with that later. But that's okay. I'm pretty happy. This is going to work. And like at least my my evil mode, my vim bindings are working pretty good. And Diddy 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 Anna Jones. All right. <clears throat> Very cool. Uh, yeah, so now that this is finally working, uh, next stream, let's see, what are we probably going to do? I think we need to actually write some code because it's been a while since I've written code <laughs> on stream. Uh, I mean, you know, playing with Nakes, getting the config working, that makes me pretty happy. Um, and we'll go from there. So pretty, pretty freaking awesome. Uh, posture check. We're there. We're going to straighten that back so well. All right, let's see who's streaming. Let's see who needs a raid. <clears throat> We've got Eduardo streaming. We've got Nate streaming. Learning Python. I mean, is that even a real programming language? I'm no, just kidding. We've got Griff Spyrodon. Get some new Rust into Nick's packages. Ooh, yeah, we'll probably get there. Um, wait, who's doing Rust, Nick? Spyrodon is okay. I, it looks like I don't follow him. So, or them. So let's go on and do this. See if I can get in here. Yeah, I've done Spheroforio several times. He's really good. He does a lot of cool Rust stuff too. 
All right. Is this guy finishing up or what? Zig, Wasm, Laravel, PHP, HTMX. He's doing everything? All right. 